Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check a new micro tiny whoop style quadcopter from FR Sky. This is the Epos MQ60 quadcopter. The quadcopter comes in this useful plastic case which will enable you to store the quadcopter or your pickles. Inside the box we can find the quadcopter, a 200 mAh 25C lithium polymer battery, a simple USB charger and the instructions manual which are pretty good and tells you all you need to know about the binding procedure and how to configure the quadcopter. The quadcopter itself has the classic tiny whoop style design. It features 6mm brushed motors, an XMF3E flight controller with a built-in XM receiver with two options of binding, either automatic or manual. I'm going to show you how to bind it later in this video. And finally, it features a 600 TV line CMOS camera with a 25 milliwatt 48 channels transmitter. And it's quite surprising that the angle of this camera is not adjustable. So when you fly the quadcopter, you're going to face the ground. We'll see how it will affect the FPV experience later when I'm going to take it for a test flight. The wheelbase of this quadcopter is 66.5 millimeters. So this is the distance between motor to motor. And the weight of the quadcopter without the battery is 21.4 grams and after adding the battery it's 27.8 grams. Charging the battery can be done either with the provided USB adapter. So you need just to connect the battery to this port over here then connect it to a USB power source. In addition you have a switch which you can change between 200 to 500 milliampere hour which will affect the charging rate. So just leave it on 200 when charging this battery. If you have multiple batteries it is advisable to get something like that or this board and then you can charge six batteries simultaneously. In order to bind the quadcopter you have two options. First of all anyway you will have to set your Terranis on D16 mode and then you can either do the binding automatically which means all you have to do just press bind then connect the battery and after about three seconds the quadcopter is going to enter bind mode and it's going to bind itself. So now when I hit exit and I need to disconnect and connect the battery, the quadcopter should be ready to go without further configuring it. So let's see, the arm switch is configured on channel one. So this is auxiliary one. Then you can see that the quadcopter is now working. Because this quadcopter has an XM receiver you're not going to get RSSI on your quadcopter it's going to be outputted for auxiliary 4 if I'm not wrong and because this quadcopter does not have an OSD it wouldn't be overlaid on the screen anyway an XM receiver has a very long range and this quadcopter is more intended for indoor flying maybe a little bit outdoor flying on a calm weather but you're not going to get too far from it and I don't think the radio strength is going to be a problem anyway. Another option of binding the quadcopter is just to power it up and press this bind option and repeat the same steps on your transmitter. Setting up the VTX is done by pressing this button over here. Long pressing it is going to change the band. You have six options and short pressing it is going to change the channel. You have eight options. So in total you have 48 options. In order to choose your favorite band and channel, just refer to the instructions manual. You have this table over here. Surprisingly, F is not fat shark, so I'm going to set it on 5860, which is D7 according to this table. The main problem is that even though this canopy is semi-transparent, it's going to be a little bit hard to see which band is on. So if you want to make your life a little bit easier, just remove the canopy by removing these three screws over here. And then it's going to be easier for you to see the LED indicators. The top LED indicators indicates the channel and the bottom one indicates the band. The left LED indicator is A, then B, C, D, E and F. So now I set it on D7, which is 5860. And as you can see, the FPV is working properly. The next thing I'm going to do is to go over beta flight configuration and take it for a short flight around the house. Unfortunately, or actually fortunately because rain is a blast. It's been raining for the past few days, so I wouldn't be able to fly it outdoors. But still, as I mentioned before, this quadcopter is intended to be flown indoors anyway. 
And of course, as always, in the end of this video, I'm going to give you my conclusion. So overall, after trying this quadcopter, I can tell you that in my opinion, it's not that great, mainly because of two reasons. First of all, the flight time wasn't good. I could get only about two minutes of flight time. And second of all, these motors are just too weak and the performance of the quadcopter is not great. I actually expected more of this quadcopter because it has the FR Sky logo and FR Sky are producing excellent radio products. So maybe they should concentrate only on releasing radio products and not releasing quadcopters. But hopefully if they will continue to build quadcopters, they will get better. And I recommend also on the next model, just use stronger motors and if possible, also include an OSD because you don't have any indication of the battery state. It doesn't have an onboard buzzer. So having an OSD will help to monitor the battery state and also, of course, to display all the flight data, which is, in my opinion, less important than just the state of the battery. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this quadcopter, feel free to ask it in the comment section below and I'll see you on my next videos. Goodbye.